Well, first of all, uh, there we go. I just need to make sure this is working. <laughs> Welcome to Kentucky, to the University of Kentucky. Can I use both microphones? OK. This is the Gluck Equine Research Center is pretty much the best research center when it comes to equine in the whole world. Um, the great majority of all vaccines that everybody uses for horses today uh, were developed in this place. Uh, this is where I had the privilege of taking my PhD. My PhD was in equine pharmacology and toxicology. Uh, so, you know, so, and I love this room. I love, you know, the ambiance in here. So that's why one time Colleen came and spoke here and then she requested this room. So she also likes this room. <laughs> so who here rides horses? Raise your hand. Everybody. Okay. So this picture just depicts the fact that we come in all shapes and sizes, okay? We're going to talk about the anatomy of riding. And horses also come in all shapes and sizes. What is the perfect shape and size? I can't really say because that, you know, if I say that I'm the perfect shape and size, I'm going to say that he isn't because we're clearly very different, okay? Can I ride effectively? the way that I am shaped, can he ride effectively the way that he is shaped, can somebody much shorter than us ride effectively? Absolutely, you just see a jockey, they can ride effectively. Uh, people have longer legs, shorter legs, it doesn't matter. When it comes to horses, okay, uh, does that mean that there, there is a study, there are several studies that show you know, how much weight a horse can actually carry um, regarding to their cannon bone circumference and so on and so forth. But that doesn't mean that, I ah, say we're like in the weight range that a horse can, but does that mean that a person that is this tall can only ride the tallest horse? Not necessarily, okay? And they can make it work both ways. So we just need to make sure that we understand that there is no perfect shape, there is no perfect, uh, for people or for horses, we just need to know the anatomy of the riding so we can better understand how to use our cues Efficiently, number one, to save energy and effectively, okay, to make the horse do what we want them to do. One of the things that is important, the horse is a living being with a brain, okay? Here's our brain, here's their brain. So we want to have, to convey a message to the horse, that message comes from our brain, okay? As it comes from our brain, it has to, uh, then we have to translate it to the horse via what? via whatever cues that it is that we're going to give to the horse. Now, the message that we want to convey to the horse, this is very important actually, has to do, number one, our ability level, yeah, of what we want to do. Some people just want to walk, trot, and canter, and some horses are only able to walk, trot, and canter. But one of the things that is very, very important is our emotions, okay? Do you guys know that our emotions play a huge role with the way that we ride? If we are mad and angry, our horses, because our body is going to be in contact with the horse's body. So the horse is going to feed up on that. Now, you may have a saint, okay, that you're angry and not saint like Colleen's horse, but a saint of a horse that you're mad and angry and all he's going to do is like, yo, chill, I'm here for you. Or you may have a mare that you're mad and angry and all of a sudden it's like, okay, is, is today the angry day? I'm with it. Let's do this. Okay, and we're both like, <laughs> <laughs> so, it does, so it depends, okay, of the type of horse that you have. Now, I am the happy owner of two mares because I'm a believer of mares. Because I'm like, okay, we're going to do this together. We're going to go through all these problems together. So here's the thing. We have our emotions. Do horses have their emotions? You better believe it, okay? So here in Kentucky, the weather changes every day, okay? We have had a wonderful week with mild weather. Uh, but sometimes it's 80 degrees, 90 degrees outside, and the next day 60, okay? Horses get very emotional those days, right? So this is one of the things. So here, our brain is trying to convey this message to this horse. This horse is not wanting to receive that message that day. So this is where we have to play almost like a psychological game. You can, you can quit, okay? Some things are not worth it, okay? Some things are not worth the fight. You may just dismount and say, you know what, today clearly is not your day, 
today, not my, today is not my day, let's just quit and tomorrow we'll pick it up from where we left. Or you can fight through it and try to get someplace. Sometimes you're going to be successful, sometimes you're not going to be successful. Uh, some fights are worth picking, some fights are actually not worth picking. We did a research, I'm with a group called Settle Up Safely, and we did a research with riders that have had uh, riding accidents, and up to 60%, I think it was 65% of the accidents, both the riders, and we analyzed the accident, the accounts of the accident, and I think 60% of the riders uh, and 65% of us um, decided that that accident was preventable. So the person says, you know, and then the horse looked kind of off that they felt off, but I went anyway, and then they go and then they break an arm. Okay, so this is one of the things that is very endearing in my heart that if you feel that that day is not your horse day, I wouldn't just cowboy it out. I'd say, you know what, I don't need this. I can ride tomorrow, okay, instead of just Obviously, unless that's a two-year-old that you're trying to break and the horse is just like you have to go through that hurdle. But say the horse is just very skittish, I just, in my opinion, wouldn't go. Uh, you say you have a 10-year-old horse, a mare, she's in heat that day. Why would I pick that fight? I can ride her tomorrow. She lives in my backyard, okay? So is, am I a wuss for doing that? Maybe after I had my child, he's 18 months old, I became the biggest wuss in the world. I'm like, okay, now I have more. I just can cannot just die, okay? I need to go and like make dinner tonight, so. <laughs> so that's one of the things that we have to say. The other thing that I think, I don't know if I'm gonna say this, uh, but here's one of the things too. We have an idea, the great idea. I am going to side pass the entire arena, okay? <coughs> we have that idea, then we need to, via our muscles, okay, and our legs and our seat convey that to the horse, we're going to generally convey that to in this point right here, this point right here, and right here, okay? And somehow, this horse receives the message and now has to translate into his little brain and actually side pass. Is that amazing or what? He's like, oh, so your butt moved this way, your leg moved that way, okay, I guess I need to side pass, okay? So if you just think about that all that we're asking horses, we're giving them the cues, okay? A cue given here and a cue given here is 100% different, okay? And we're also com communicating to the horse by his mouth, okay? So we just need, when just think about that one when picking on your horse. Are you, is your horse being a jerk or are you not that good that day, okay? So you just need to, when conveying that,